moments, we will be joined by the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Jason Chaffetz. His team fought the Obama administration for years to get some of these changes. But first, we go to Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts, live at the White House with exactly how all of this went down today. Hi, John. Martha, good evening to you. You know, all during the campaign trail, there was a running question. Would President Trump make good on his pledge to build a border wall, or would the wall simply fall to the pressure of politics once it got to Washington, D.C.? Well, today, he made good on that promise, signing, into, in, in, signing an executive order, a sweeping series of new measures to enhance border, uh, security along the southern border. First and foremost among them, construction of a new wall, which by some estimates could cost $25 billion. There was a candidate, President Trump said it would be more like 8 to $12 billion. He also wants to hire 5,000 more Border Patrol agents. The order would also eliminate the Obama-era practice of catch and release, which administration officials believe could stem the tide of migrants coming through Mexico from Central America to the United States. And here's a big one. It would also end some forms of federal funding for sanctuary cities like those of New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Initially, U.S. taxpayers would foot the bill for construction, but President Trump, as you saw there earlier, insists that Mexico ultimately will pay that bill. Another big executive order coming, this one likely on Friday, the policy that was originally called the Muslim ban. President Trump will temporarily, temporarily suspend visas from nations like Iraq, Syria, Sudan, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen. He's also expected to reduce the number of refugees that are allowed to come into the United States and potentially put a temporary ban on all refugees from Syria coming into the U.S. until those extreme vetting measures can be put in place. Martha, the president firmly believes that that, combined with the enhanced security measures on the southern border, really will go a long way to improving security, national security here in the United States. Martha. John, thank you very much. Joining me now, Congressman Jason Chaffetz, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, which held several hearings on the Obama administration's practice of capturing and releasing criminal illegal immigrants. He joins us now from the Republican retreat that is going on in Philadelphia, but he put on a tie for us this evening. Uh, everybody was in sweaters today. Hey, Jason, good to see you, Congressman. Welcome. So I did. I just clipped on this tie. Uh, I appreciate to be with you. that. Very nice of you. So, you, you know, you just listened to John Roberts' report. I mean, you've got potential action on yeah. DACA, on Muslim immigrants to this country. You have, you know, shockwaves yeah. going across the country mm -hmm. at the fact that he's actually following through with a lot of what he said he would do, build the wall and the like. Your thoughts on all this? Well, it is shocking, right, for those on the left, those liberals who didn't think that you'd actually elect somebody who did what they said they were going to do and actually enforce the law. All we tried to do for over the last eight years is try to get President Obama to enforce the law, and he would not do it. And so to have President Trump take this action in the first few days, I think, sends a strong signal. I wholeheartedly support it, and uh, we desperately need it. All right. Who's going to pay for the wall? Uh, the upfront money is going to come from the U.S. taxpayer. How's that going to work? Well, I think uh, we're going to visit with, uh, with President Trump, but I do think Mexico will ultimately pay for it, and it's going to help both countries. And I heard you mention that potentially the president of Mexico is not going to come to the United States. That would be the absolute uh, uh, wrong move. We have strong cultural ties. We have a lot of trade that happens between the two countries. But I do believe in securing the border, we're going to help end human trafficking. We're going to help deal with the weapons problems of crossing the border. We're going to deal with the illegal drug trade and deal with the legal things that we should have. And, and that's in the interest of both the United States and Mexico. Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest concerns on the part of people who are here or children who were born here, mm -hmm. we heard so much about DACA and deferring action yeah. in terms of kicking them out. I, I want to go to this soundbite between uh, now President Trump, but he was on the campaign trail at the time, and Chuck Todd talking about what's known as DACA. Watch. The executive order gets uh, rescinded. One good thing you'll about rescind, you'll rescind that one too. One good thing you'll about you'll rescind the Dream Act executive order. To, DACA. We have to make a whole new set of standards, and when people come in, they have so to you're come split in. Up families. Split up families. Paul Ryan was asked about this tonight in an interview, and he said the dreamers need not worry. What's your understanding of whether or not they need to worry? Well, look, we need to fix legal immigration, but I want to prioritize going after those criminal aliens. Under Barack Obama, he released more than 80,000 people that were here in this country illegally, committed a crime, were convicted of that crime, and rather than deporting them, he released them back out into the public. So there's this criminal element out there that should be prioritized, not some three-year-old who didn't come here um, you know, by their own volition. But at the same time, we have laws on the books, and I think what we see is the signal out of the White House today, which is so encouraging, let's 
enforce the law and fix legal immigration. I think that's a good mantra. So the other thing that is coming next is is the rule on countries that harbor terrorists or where terrorism comes yeah. from. Uh, Syria would be on that list. Yemen would be on that list. Libya and the like. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. And can he do it? I think extreme vetting, making sure we know exactly who these people are, what their background is. Remember, we heard the FBI director a, a long time ago say, we can't properly vet these people because we don't know their background. And the other thing I heard President Trump talk about was dealing with asylum reform. This is a bill that I've been championing. It has absolutely, it's being taken advantage of. People are coming here claiming asylum. They'll get a court date in 2020. Now they're here legally, and yet they snuck into the country. And so. There's a lot of fix there. An entry exit program, I, I just uh, very proud of what the president did today. It's the Before right I let action. you go, I, I want to ask you something on a different topic. Um, a report that came out today that you're looking yeah. into the Trump D.C. hotel lease. What is that about? Well, we did ask at the beginning of December to see what this uh, contract looks like, and that's all. We've simply requested that. We'll see where it goes. Um, but uh, the, the Oversight Committee did request the, that copy of that lease. Are you concerned that there's not a strong enough separation between the business and, and the president where that hotel is concerned, or what? No, I, I think there's an interesting question when you have somebody who is both the uh, tenant and the landlord. Uh, how is that going to work? And we're curious as to what uh, uh, the GSA who administers these contracts, uh, what do they think of that, and how is that going to work out? All right. Well, stay tuned. Congressman Chapis, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight.